Now that we've talked about baseline correction and how noise in the baseline can impact the post-stimulus period, let's look at an even more pernicious problem, overlap. Imagine that we're doing an experiment with a stimulus every 800 milliseconds. And imagine that we knew that this was the actual ERP waveform elicited by the stimulus. Notice that we have a 200 millisecond pre-stimulus baseline period. Because we have a stimulus every 800 milliseconds, the next stimulus will be at 800 milliseconds relative to the current stimulus. And the 200 millisecond pre-stimulus interval for that next stimulus will be from 600 to 800 milliseconds relative to the current stimulus. So the last part of the waveform from the current stimulus will be present during the pre-stimulus baseline of the next stimulus. So the green line here is what our data will actually look like. It's the overlap from the previous trial plus the ERP from the current trial. But then, when we do our baseline correction, the overlap messes up our estimate of the voltage offset, and we end up massively overcorrecting, and our whole waveform gets shifted way downward. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem. If we're comparing two conditions, and the stimuli for the two conditions are presented in random order, the overlap in the baseline should be the same for both conditions. In this example, the overlap is the same for the green line and the blue line. As a result, any difference between the two conditions can't be explained by the overlap it would be perfectly valid to compare the ERPs in these two conditions. We call this non-differential overlap. Overlap isn't usually a problem unless it differs between conditions, which we call differential overlap. Here's an example. One condition has very little overlap from the previous trial. The other is identical, except that it contains overlapping activity that distorts the baseline, which causes the whole waveform to be shifted downward by the baseline correction process. You can see the overlap here and you can see that the entire waveform is shifted downward starting right after time zero. This causes an apparent difference between conditions in P3 amplitude, but this difference is actually an artifact of the differential overlap. The bottom line is that when you're reading ERP papers, you need to scour the methods carefully to make sure that the overlap doesn't differ across conditions. If the stimuli are presented in random order and the conditions vary randomly within each block of trials, you're usually okay but be careful if the experimental conditions aren't randomized or if there's a manipulation of the time between trials. You can also look for signatures of differential overlap in the data. If you see a steeper tilt during the baseline period in one condition than in another, you should be concerned. And if you see effects that begin right around time zero and last for hundreds of milliseconds, you should be concerned. You might wonder why we bother with baseline correction given that it tends to exacerbate the impact of differential overlap but we have to get rid of the voltage offsets. They can add hundreds of microvolts of uncontrolled variance to the data. There are other methods for dealing with these offsets, but these other methods also have shortcomings. And in about 99% of cases, I find that a combination of baseline correction and careful experimental design is the best approach.